Well done, boy. How's it feel? How's it? I just killed someone. No, you did what was necessary. Think about it. Remember? She was in a unbridled rage, having no qualms but killing you and got who knows who else who whatever uh, you know who could have found this place or she would have broken out and killed God knows how many other people as far as I can tell you're a hero in this case though yes you were a bit of a a bit worried with your actions it doesn't mean they weren't justified but I really wish I didn't have to kill her she's at peace now killing her was a mercy and sometimes it's your only option What about peace and that doesn't always work. You seen the Holocron, right? You saw the pure madness that the Jedi have allowed into this world, or at least the galaxy she came from before. You had no choice. If if you really think about it, this was the best option and only option you had besides dying and letting her run rampant. I guess you're, of course I'm right. Don't, don't discourage yourself. Don't question what's right or wrong. Just know that you saved who knows how many people from her wrath. But chances are heroes would have, what, tried to detain her? Eventually stopped her? Then what? I heard legend of a Jedi who kept a planet together alone. Wait, what? Yeah. Jedi have potential to be that powerful. I, 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 uh, yep. <sighs> Listen. The sooner you realize that sometimes someone has to die, the easier it's going to be for you. But I still... <sighs> Look, you don't have to wield me. Not yet. You can still use your master's lightsaber. But know this, Bo-Katan is coming, and she will come for me. Will you be prepared to do what has to be done? But, wait, wait do, do we have to kill each other? No. But then again, you would be seen as weak. As well as thinking about her. Uh, the potential for more ruthless individuals coming for me. Ones who don't value the life on your planet. You know, more unsavory individuals who would be more than happy to exterminate everyone here. If you thought she could have caused some damage. Imagine someone with an armada, a fleet 
of ships able to uh, annihilate this planet. I, uh, uh, I didn't. No, no, you didn't. How could you? Listen. I will be here for you whenever you solely require my power. The lightsaber is there for you to use more peaceful or less stressful situations. Uh, uh, but... But at the very least, one thing you do requires armor. Check in one of the bomb compartments. It has new Mandalorian Beskar armor. It is yours. As Zoo does put it on, he notices, okay, this doesn't fit me at all. What? Oh, yes. That would make sense. You. It was meant for more of a feminine frame as well as... Wait, what? This is women's armor? Well, well this did belong to Bo-Katan. Uh, oh, come on! But I... What am I supposed to do with this? Find an armor. A what? Someone who makes armor, weapons, all the like. I have no idea of anyone who could possibly be of that much help. Well, first things first, find someone like that, as well as make sure you can trust them before you bring them here. Last thing we need is someone trying to steal me. Or this ship. Huh. Judging from what I've learned from your culture, you people haven't even made hyperdrives yet, let alone achieved true space travel. We're getting close. Your master came from another galaxy. Fair, very, very fair point. So, what do I do now? Train. Either with me or the lightsaber, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you get a fight and make sure that you survive up until it's time for your duel. However long that may take. Oh, oh, okay. So, what, what now? You may bury your master. Then, get ready for school. This is going to be a very interesting life you're going to lead. No doubt. As now it's the first day of UA and Izuku is nervous. When it comes to him pretty much being outed by that was Okay. I seen a glimpse of your power in which Hmm. Yeah, I think you should be exempt from this. Barrio is like, what the hell, pretty much, but still, you know what, whatever, I, I, I don't care. Lying his ass off, pretty much being like that bastard. Don't tell me he's that strong. Which, Barrio, when he throws the ball, he does get a higher score. One thing is, he is mouthing off. To everyone, getting on the nerves. 
Danny Zuku was starting to feel this little rage build up. As he knows how strong he is and how strong he can potentially be. So he volunteers like, you know what, let me do this. Alright, but I need this ball back. Very well. Izuku gets ready. Him using whatever strength he does have, he throws the ball. Mixed in with a bit of the force, and it goes flying. To the point where Oroch is like, wait, don't tell me it's going to hit Affinity. As, as I was... That's funny. What? It something stopped. Huh? Everyone looking at Izuku's score, and which... It's exactly one meter ahead of Bakugo's score. Everyone's looking at him. He's like, okay, now go get the ball, I guess. Him calling it back and handing it to Azawa. As they are looking, he's like, wait, so you? I purposefully went above him, just staring at Bakugo. Well, why did you... He needs to learn. He's not the top dog anymore. There are people with better quirks, more experience, better suited to be heroes than he is now. As it just stays like that. Silence. Izuku just walking off. Bakugo is shocked as hell, but also, like, what the hell did you say? Pretty much, he just called you. He just said, pretty much, you ain't irrelevant. You are irrelevant. Anyway, yes, Bakugo does confront Izuku, but Izuku is having none of it. As in a fair rage, he starts telling off Bakugo, pretty much saying how. Yeah, Bago ain't the best at anything, besides being a terrible friend, and possibly an even worse hero, especially given his ignorance and his cocky ass attitude and behavior. And you can imagine, Bago's like, who is this? Though, yes, he is... Very for Izuku for healing him, but it's, uh, oof. the fact that Izuku has so much hmm, unbridled, unfiltered esque anger inside of him, he just realized, did I help make this version of you by accident? Are you the result of my constant teasing? Maybe we before he's a good just walking off, not paying him no attention at all. As I said, well, does talk with all might. <sighs> well, I can't explain it. I couldn't stop him. What? Wait, so you... Yeah. I used my quirk during the... Ugh. I actually used my quirk, but nothing. It didn't work. My quirk was useless. I couldn't cancel his out. I don't understand why, but... I mean... What are you saying? Chances are, his quirk, it might not be a quirk. What? No, 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 that's impossible. Then what in the world could his power be? 
I don't know, but if I can't cancel it out, and he turns to a dark to persuasion, chances are there'll be little we can do to stop him if he gets too strong. Truly, that's terrifying. Yes, it is. Oh, well, let's not worry about it at the moment. If anything, as long as he stays on the right path, there's nothing to worry about, correct? Yes. As long as he can still want to be a hero, that is. Good. As yes, you can just imagine Izuku coming home and pretty much reeling back like, what the hell was that? You're starting to finally let loose a little. Wait, why is that? Was that you? I was like, no. That's all you. You see, you uh, idolize this Bakugo boy a lot. Almost as much as you would that All Might man. Hmm. If anything, your admiration for both of them actually grew when you found out that you don't have a quirk. Really? Yep. Considering that now you do have power, that could actually help you become a hero. Still, I see it as a bit more of a useless waste of time. This does seem to be more helpful in your baggage. Deep down, you resented young Bakugo for turning his back on you, didn't you? Yeah. And once you see, you got that power, and he went behind your back and made people think you were a a dangerous individual. How'd that make you feel? Uh. I felt uh, a little bit betrayed. Yeah. Y yeah. Because your friend has turned his back on you. Completely. And... Huh, doesn't like you being in the spotlight. Huh. I just don't understand because he sees you as a threat if anything you should be doing the same thing what see him as a potential threat well do you know what we Mandalorians would do to threats well what we would exterminate them. We would go to planets, take them over, wipe out the species. <laughs> there was this one species that we turned into mounts. We rode them like horses. <sighs> So much has changed. So many. Mm. So much death. So much fighting. Are you alright? I should ask you that. You're talking to an inanimate object. Well, you're talking to me, technically, true. Just don't do that in public. 
or else people will think you're off your rocker, as they will say. Now, let's get to the whole heroes versus villains, in which the teams are the same. Aizuku is just looking at Bakugo with just whatever ness. Bakugo is pissed, but also cautious. He's not a complete idiot. He remembers Izuku is an anal analyst. He pretty much analyzes Bakugo to a T when we consider the fact how they used to be friends and all that. So if anything, he's more than willing to listen to whatever kind of plan Ida has cooking in that brain of his. When they try to implement it, Izuku is already there as he touches the bomb, not even giving Bakugo the decency of facing him and fighting. As you can imagine, Bakugo takes great offense to this, saying that he's weak, but also saying you're so scared that you don't even want to face me yourself. Izuku uses the force and slams Bakugo to a wall five times. What do you guys say now? <coughs> Him trying to fight back against his cinema role nature of saying sorry and apologizing to Bakugo. As Bakugo actually notices this, as he knows is Izuku slightly shaking. Huh. That's interesting. But, Ida being able to be his hero-esque self, again, he's pretty much like, please, no fighting. Even all my is like, okay, calm your asses down. Hero team wins, Izuku was MVP, mixed in with Ida, and I'll go to, the, to, go to the infirmary? No, he does not. If anything, the only thing they criticize Izuku on is lack of teamwork as well as a mixture of you know, having an ego type thing when it goes to Buck goes taunting. Izuku doesn't care. At all. At least that's what he shows. But this is when Bakugo does confront him this time. Uh, why were you shaking? Are you scared of me? I don't want to hurt you. You can't as Izuku stops and Bogo is trying to walk up to him but he can't. Pissed but also was like what's going on here? He can't move as he looks up and sees Izuku staring at him with a rage-filled fire-esque demeanor. I, 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 uh, I'm sorry, you have anything to say to me, Bakugo? Why were you shaking? I'm trying to make a change. Try something different. Wait, what do you mean by different? I'm done being your punching bag, Kotsky. Never again. Really? Is that how you feel? Yes. I'm sick of it. It's bad enough. All that time ago, you said it would be a good idea to spy on me while I'm training. It's worse when you consider the fact that I hurt you. I almost killed you. Yeah. I almost killed you. 
Let that marinate in your soul right quick. That I could have ended you. No hero named Bakugo. No UA. No nothing. I'm trying to change. Be a better person, someone who's worthy of being a hero. But you keep making things difficult for me. I don't know why, but you really get on my nerves. At least all of a sudden you do. It's weird. For you being such a jerk, I probably won't be like this right now. Or would I? I've tried to be your friend, but all you've done to repay me is spit at me, talk shit, try to find. Something that makes you more superior to me when in reality you're actually scared that I'll be a better hero than you, that I am better than you. <coughs> you don't have to admit it, I already know you're afraid. A potential that I have. You know how good a hero I can be. That I can be better than you. Better than all might. You're scared of being left behind. Just like you left me behind. I'm not chasing you. Not anymore. I'm not gonna try to be like you. I'm not gonna try to gain your recognition or approval. I don't need that. I don't need to prove anything to anyone. I'm gonna be a hero. But it's not for you. As Izuku walks off. Bakugo has no words. I mean, what could he say? Izuku pretty much says, Yeah, I know you're really scared of me. You're really scared of the hero I can be. Huh. Was he right? Was he wrong? Hmm? Maybe, maybe not. All Bakugo knows for sure is it is on. Izuku has power, so is Bakugo. The playing field is now even compared to how it would be if he had no quirk at all. At least, Bakugo thinks it's even. Izuku hasn't even used any other force based abilities yet. So, with that being done, Everything's been said. Izuku does start to really think about everything he said. He pretty much challenged Bakugo downright, say he's not really a hero at all. As you can imagine Bakugo was pissed at that. But Izuku, not giving the damn anymore, huh? I actually stood up to him. I honestly got stood up to him. You're not going to say anything? Hello? As he's trying to communicate with the voice he's had with the dark saber, but things happening. This is weird because he's never had a real problem talking to it before. But 
If anything, he's just like, oh, maybe it's nothing. Just not, don't worry about it. Just go on with life. In which this is the point of which we have the USJ. As you can imagine, Yuzuku feels a disturbance trying to warn Aizawa and 13, but they just think it's paranoia, all things considered. But when the heroes do see the villains, as well as the classmates, he's pretty much like, I told you so, like, how would you know, type thing. As then, yes, Aizawa, he goes down to fight. Students separated. Sue, Mana, Mizuku, still on the shipwreck zone. In which, Izuku knows his all the villains. In which, he's pretty much... Okay, what do I do here? What can I do here? I... Oh. Him grabbing for one of his lightsabers, but then he's like, wait. Does it work when it's wet? This is when the shark shows up and then Sue saves him last minute. Thank you. No problem. Izuku tries to think of a plan. It's considering he doesn't really have overall raw power when it comes like all my He doesn't have as many options until he thinks Wait, I know where each and every one of them are. Okay, maybe if I, as he points his hand down to the water, Sue and Mel are asking, wait, what are you doing? I gotta concentrate. It's a whirlpool starts to form. As the villains start screaming and yelling, asking what's going on, Sue's like, wait, is this, I thought, jump, you're going to jump. Wait, what? Into? Come on. I'll, I'll give you a push. Grab banana and jump to the shore. Wait, but what about? I'll follow soon after you. But I gotta take care of these guys first. So she is very hesitant, but Banana's like, hey, 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 we should listen to the man here. Oh, you're just a coward. Actually, Banana, I'm gonna need you. To throw your sticky balls in that water. What? Why? To make sure the villains can't get to you after you jump to shore? Any of this seems like. Oh, okay, fine, 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 whatever. As yes, it works. One thing is, Izuku, he's exhausted. But then he gets a flash of Sue getting disintegrated. And he reacts. Him grabbing his lightsaber out of pure instinct and cutting off Shigaraki's hand. Shigaraki isn't bleeding because, hell, you know, it's a plasma sword. That, that wound is colorized already. As yes, Sue and Manana are shocked that Izuku was able to not only know that Shigaraki was going to attack Sue, but also the way he reacts so quickly and almost dis completely disarmed the villain. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, as Shigaraki is screaming out in pure agony and pain, Kodagiri has no choice but to divert his attention and get Shigaraki out of there. But Shigaraki is petty as hell. So the Nomu goes straight for Izuku, who still has his lightsaber in hand, and they fight. Izuku is busy cutting the Nomu to pieces, but it keeps going back. Is then he just thinks, what is this guy's quirks? As then he sees Nomu just punch the lightsaber and s slice its hand all the way to its shoulder down the middle. Shigaraki is laughing 
saying that thing was meant to kill all might. But then, so, wait, so it's not a living thing? No, it's artificially created, bioengineered weapon, and it was meant to kill all might. It has three quirks, a regeneration, super strength. Yeah. Really? Eh. And shock absorption. As Zuku lets it be known, like, uh, yeah, shock absorption doesn't work when you're using something that cuts. Did you not? Oh. As Zuku just forgets about the Nomu for a second as it socks him straight into the wall. His arm is broken. His lightsaber is on the far side of the USJ. He, he has to try his best to keep from going completely unconscious as he starts slowly bleeding. In which he looks as for his dark saber. Shigaraki finds it, picks it up. So he turns it on. He knows his. What the hell? This thing is so heavy. Izuku, angry, as Nobu steps towards him, give that back. And Shigaraki, as you can imagine, is like, What are you going to do if I don't? As pebbles, rocks, even other villains start to float in the air as Shigaraki's noticing this. It's like, wait, what's going on? Seeing that Izuku, his arm snaps back into place. As his bleeding head slowly stops. His leg that looked broken starts reconfiguring itself as Izuku starts walking towards Shigaraki, making craters with every single step he takes. No, it goes for Izuku, but Izuku's using a force field, making it so Nobu can't touch him at all. Shigaraki is looking at this like, what? Where did all this power come from? As he starts running at Izuku with one hand, Holding the dark saber and swings. Him not being able to touch Izuku with it either. Izuku grabs his hand, takes the dark saber, and cuts off Shigaraki's other hand. This time with the arm attached. So Shigaraki lost a hand and a whole arm. So, yeah, he is feeling that right now. The Nomu, going in for another strike on Izuku, gets his head chopped off. In an instant. They couldn't even see Izuku move before the damn Nomu's head plopped on the ground. Kurigiri is trying to get to Shigaraki. But whatever portal he does make, it gets blown away due to Izuku's sheer power. Only until he passes out due to exhaustion. Shigaraki is saved. Kodagiri gets the hell out of there. And <laughs> students are rightfully so shocked to high health. Yeah, so that's how the USJ ends. When All Might does get there with with the intent of throwing hands, he is shocked to see Izuku hurt beyond what he really would have thought. And Aizawa beaten and bloodied, seeing the mouths pretty much gaped open from not only the villains that are still there, but also the students. He's like, what happened here? And then the other heroes show up and they have the same question. 
what did we miss? And yeah. When they learn that Izuku did all this, they see the severed limbs that once was the Nomu and Shigaraki, and they just have even more questions. When he wakes up in the infirmary, All Might is there, and Izuku is handcuffed to the hospital bed. So, what was that? What? What happened? You almost killed someone. I, uh, I, I didn't have a choice. Oh, yes, you did. I saw the footage. Now, why don't you tell me more about this quirk of yours? Or is there something else you want to tell me? Wait, what? Like how it's not a quirk at all. So it's not. Then explain yourself. Uh, I I can't. What? I don't know how to explain it. So you say. Well, until you do find a way, you're suspended. Wait, what? Yes, you're suspended for a month. You will not be allowed to participate in the sports festival or the internship. But wait, I... No, until you feel like being honest with me, you are not allowed to participate at all. It's not fair. Well, sorry. Life's not fair. And sometimes decisions need to be made. All my walking out and leaving Zuku like that. When he opens the door, his other classmates are there after, you know, of course, they were eavesdropping. Bongo doesn't have a smart aleck comments at all. If anything, he's pretty much silent. Just wondering. Okay. So, yeah, you've. You did good. I. Yeah. Leave. Please. What? I. Uh. I don't want to hear anything from any of you. It's irrelevant. This is Midoriya. Hmm. What? Someone has something to say to you. As here comes Sue. In which she bows her head and thanks Midoriya for saving her. Him, him trying to keep his cool while also was a, like, what, what, why are you doing this? Because I'm grateful to you for saving me. Though I'm, your method may have been a bit much, you still saved me. Yeah, I did, so. Thank you. 
I'm sorry for what happened. Doesn't matter. It just means I, uh, have some things to work out. Yes, he's a goo. He does get back on his feet, but also is pretty much like, uh, okay, so what now? Type thing. Mariko learns about this, and she is told a watered down version of the circumstances. It's pretty much like, no. No, that does not sound like the Izuku I raised. She, but she has noticed the difference in his demeanor as of late. In which, Izuku is even surprised at this. I mean, yeah, he has been a bit different, but has it really been that different? As he does decide to meditate a little bit. And see, at least try, to see what's going coming on with his uh, little noggin skate. He's mm, more or less surprised to see, like, oh, okay, this is different. As he sees pure, utter darkness with a shining glimmer of light, him running right towards it. When he gets there, he sees this weird temple. Wait, where am I? Welcome. Huh? Wait. As yes, Yanizuku is face to face. With, huh? The Dark Saber. Uh, wait. What are you doing in my head? I've been in your head ever since you first wielded me. When you talked to me, <laughs> it was in your head. Wait, wait, how does that make any sense? Did you know that the Darksaber? It's harder to wield than a traditional lightsaber. He knows how heavy it was. Well, yeah, but I didn't think much of it. I just... Yes. I thought so. Huh. Yeah. Of course, I. I have a lot to learn, don't I? Yes. Wait, was it your fault that. No. If anything, you just, uh. awakened a part of you. It was just completely normal. Mm -hmm. I don't really understand it, but yeah, don't worry. If anything, it just means that you uh, eh. we'll have to learn about it together. If anything, I need to know more about you. And I need to know more about this literal sword that is honest to God alive. <laughs> yes, I suppose you do have a point in that. I feel like a better word. I do need to consider the fact that you aren't a full Mandalorian. 
You are indeed a normal boy, as you, you've been through a lot all these years. Yeah, but if anything, if I wasn't over for the task, I could have just, yes, I suppose you could have. Couldn't you? But fear not. You're not alone in this. If anything, let's learn together. Okay. So, first things first, what was that that I did? Hmm. Think of it as more along the lines of instinct drawn on by a stressful situation. When you were about to lose the dark saber, when you were about to die, your body reacted. At least the force in a different way. Like you know the Sith, correct? Yes. And you know the Jedi. Right. Tell me one of the main differences. While the Jedi you go with the flow of the force, the Sith try to control it and harness it in a way to fit their needs. Hmm. You learn fast. But yes, that is something that you could say sets them apart from all each other. However, when it comes to them, uh, their philosophies both aren't wrong. Just one is more self righteous while another huh, mainly focuses on power and being able to survive. Like this. The Sith, once they get to a certain age, or status, they will end up killing one another. Yeah. It's actually quite interesting. Like, I think it like, um, let's see. A Sith Master has two students. But by the end of the student's training, there's only one student. Okay. But then, there's only one master. Or should I say, one Sith. Wait, what? <laughs> the Sith apprentices kill whoever else is a, you could say, biting for their master's attention. Wait, really? Oh, yes. Actually, it goes deeper than that because the Sith apprentice has to kill their master. But, wait, but why? To prove who's stronger. If you're able to kill your master, that proves that you're stronger. But if you're not stronger, you die. And the Sith Master moves on to the next apprentice. The end goal is to become a Sith Master. This is only done by killing your former master. But that's terrible. It is their way. Or the strongest survive while the weak are 
nothing more than resources wasted or tools to be used. You don't believe that, do you? I can at least say it's not ideal if you want to um, broke a trust amongst fellow in your ilk. But I can at least say it is not without its usefulness. But, so there's no other way? The Sith, the Jedi, the Mandalorian, we each have our own philosophies, our own agendas. Yeah, I guess you're right. So, what about well, I mean, what should I do? You should forge your own path. Are you going to tear towards the dark? The light? The Mandalorian? Which one would you choose? Um, if anything, I see value in all of them, but... Why can't I just choose all choose all three? <laughs> yeah. It's actually funny. I don't think anyone's ever made that choice before. Well, Travis Lud did. Who's that? As a dark saber, then flashes a bright light as Izuku sees, yeah, the first Mandalorian to actually wield the dark saber. So, me. Uh, uh, wait, what? Wait, how? Wait, wait, you were? I was a Jedi once before. Though, yes, I was Mandalorian, and the Jedi way was foreign to me, somewhat looked down upon, I still found a way to become one with the Force itself. <laughs> Seriously? Yes. Yeah, at the very least, I do believe it's your turn. To find your path, young Midoriya. Well, you're gonna help me, right? Alas, this is your path to walk. I've already had my time. I can only pass on the knowledge of which I've acquired over the years. And that's it. For anything. All we can do is hope that you make the right decision. Huh. Okay. I'll try my best. <laughs> That's the spirit. However, Whatever you do, don't give her the dark saber. Wait, what? Don't just willingly give Bokatan the dark saber. She has to earn it. Otherwise, history will repeat itself. And there will truly be no future 
for Mandalore.